Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Today, I wanted to show you my improvised EDM machine. Now, in case you don't already know, EDM is an acronym for Electric Discharge Machining. Uh, sometimes this process is also referred to as metal disintegration or electric metal disintegration, or in technical circles sometimes as electric arc ablation. Uh, regardless of what we call it, the principle is simply that when you get an electrical spark uh, between two pieces of metal, a little bit of metal is removed from those pieces of metal. Uh, and so by uh, controlling this process, you know, initiating and extinguishing an electric spark very rapidly between an electrode and a workpiece that we want to uh, machine, we can cut metal or potentially other conductive substances. Uh, now, this setup might look complex if you're not familiar with electronics, but conceptually, uh, the, what's going on here is really pretty simple, at least once you understand it. Now, you may recognize this big black box from previous episodes as a bridge rectifier that I built to take 120 volt AC and convert it to DC. I've still got that wired in series with an electrical outlet so that I can plug my halogen work light into it to act as a current regulator. Uh, and then I've got the negative terminal connected to my electrode and the positive terminal uh, connected to a wire that's connected to the workpiece. Uh, I'm just using a scrap of an old steel file as a workpiece. Uh, this screw here is just a clamp that holds the workpiece in place, and then I've got a lead screw to feed the electrode up and down. This is just a single axis, uh, basically a die sinking EDM machine. Uh, now I have made a couple of uh, new modifications to my bridge rectifier circuit. Uh, specifically, I added a voltage divider in here so that I can use a, a sensing resistor to measure how much current is flowing. Uh, and then I've got this big MOSFET transistor here that allows me to switch the power on and off uh, potentially very rapidly using a microcontroller, which also measures the current. Uh, so over here we have the microcontroller itself. Uh, this one actually is an Arduino Micro. Uh, and then that is also connected to a stepper motor driver circuit which is connected to a stepper motor to turn the lead screw. So what happens here is when I press the white button on the microcontroller board, uh, it will uh, cause the motor to turn and feed the electrode down into the work until it senses that current is flowing. Uh, as long as the current is in the right uh, band, it will just repeatedly pulse the, the voltage or turn the power supply on and off rapidly to uh, initiate and extinguish the arc and cause the electric discharge machining process to happen. Uh, if it senses that the current is too high, implying that we've uh, contacted the workpiece with the electrode and created a short circuit, uh, then it will back off. Uh, while if it senses that it's too low, uh, then it will feed it in closer to the workpiece. Um, of course, the microcontroller itself runs on 5 volts DC, uh, so I've got this little uh, DC power supply circuit here that I scavenged out of a USB charger, uh, so that just takes the 120 volt in, converts it to 5 volts DC out to run the microcontroller, then the stepper motor driver circuit needs 12 volts DC, uh, so I've got a little transformer that takes the 120 volt AC input, steps it down to 12 volts, uh, but still AC, so then I've got a, uh, another little bridge rectifier circuit here that takes the 12 volts AC and converts it to DC to run the stepper motor driver circuit. So that's really all that's going on here. Uh, you know, it may look complicated, but conceptually it's pretty simple. Now, most EDM machines require a working fluid in order to operate, uh, which serves both as a dielectric and also as a coolant. A lot of commercial EDM machines use deionized water as a working fluid and then have a special filtration system that regulates the conductivity of the water to keep it in the optimal band. 
In my case, I tried using water in this system. I tried the full spectrum from fully deionized you know, to tap water, to salt water, and I couldn't get any form of water to work, regardless of its conductivity. Uh, you know, I just couldn't get it to sustain the electrical discharge. Uh, so what I ended up doing was going to oil. Uh, and oil seems to work pretty well, regardless of what type of oil is used, at least as far as its dielectric properties are concerned. Uh, you know, so motor oil, canola oil, WD-40, you know, any of those seem to uh, work much better in terms of providing the dielectric medium to initiate the electrical discharge. What I ended up going with as the working fluid in this machine, though, is diesel fuel. Uh, reason being, well, it's an oil and it works just as well as any other oil in this capacity. Uh, it's also a very inexpensive uh, oil compared to most other options. Uh, and its relatively low viscosity allows it to flow easily into narrow cuts. Um, of course, it is flammable, but not nearly as flammable as gasoline. Uh, so I think the fire hazard here is manageable. Now, I also experimented with different uh, electrode materials. Uh, I found that aluminum actually works very well. Uh, brass also works pretty well. Uh, there's a brass cartridge case that I adapted to make an electrode out of it. Uh, I, of course, have an aluminum electrode in the electrode holder at the moment. Uh, surprisingly, a tungsten uh, TIG welding electrode did not work at all. Uh, or, or rather it, it had a tendency to stick and just didn't seem to cut very well. Uh, I, I also tried a stainless steel electrode and that kind of worked but not as well as the brass or the aluminum. So let me go ahead and fire this machine up so you can see it working. So here is the electrode that I was using. Uh, as you can see, it has kind of a cross-shaped uh, cross-section. And here is the workpiece. Uh, as you can see, that soft aluminum electrode cut right into that hardened steel file. So in principle, this has all kinds of wonderful applications, but in practice, the real drawback to this process is that it's extremely slow. Uh, it actually took the better part of an hour to make the cut that I showed you, uh, although it probably won't seem that long to you because when I get this in the computer, I will doubtless apply some kind of time lapse to the video. Uh, and so because it is so slow, that kind of limits its practical utility. Now, I may tinker with this and try and see if I can improve the cutting speed. Of course, the obvious way to improve the cutting speed is to increase the wattage of the power supply, uh, which 
would basically necessitate building a, a new power supply from scratch. So not sure when or whether I'll get around to doing that, but I still thought this was really an interesting proof of concept, uh, both for the purpose of demonstrating the principle and also perhaps for exposing the limitations of this process, or at least of this kind of a do-it-yourself EDM machine. So, anyway, until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.